This video is an opportunity to better understand the student progress report that is published from the Measures of Academic Progress, or the MAP test. A few quick terms to get us going. MAP measures student performance using the RIT, R-I-T, the Roche Interval Unit. It's a measurement used to estimate student performance based on the difficulty. We could think of it as how tall a student is at various points of time throughout the year, but we're measuring the student not with inches or centimeters, but with RIT. A percentile is comparing one child's performance to other children at that particular grade level. So if a student scored in the 75th percentile, that would mean they scored higher than 75% of the students that took the assessment. And conversely, they scored not as good as 25% of the students at that grade level who took that assessment. The student progress report will come home looking like this. Here is a mathematics report and a reading report. A report also might include a language usage report. Even if the report is not printed in color and comes home in black and white, the columns still represent the same order as the colors that are seen below, blue, orange, and yellow. Now let's get just a little closer. On the right side of the report is a specific table that offers a spe the specific information about how students did on their assessment. Along the left side, it details the time of year that a student took this assessment, winter, spring, and fall. MAP will always record your students' data for posterity. So if a child is in a school system that uses MAP for several years, this report will span the time that a student is in that particular school system. The RIT score is here. This is how tall the student is. You may notice that the black number in the middle is bold-faced. That is the RIT score. So for instance, this student scored 190 RIT on this assessment in the winter of 2014 in second grade. That score of 190 when compared to other students, looking at the right side percentile range, scores this student in the 64th percentile. So 64 students, 64 percent of students scored lower than a 190, and 36 percent of students scored above. If a school is measuring fall to spring growth, in the spring there will be populated numbers in this line. The growth projection is what 50% of the students who started at the same spot where this student did in the fall will have grown 16 RIT. So for this first grader who started at 165 RIT, 50% of those students who start here will grow 16, which would then result in a 181 RIT score. Now this student in first grade had a fantastic experience and grew far beyond where we would hope 50% of students can grow. Their growth was actually 31 RIT, which scored them in the 196 RIT area. Notice what also happened to the student's percentile. They started the year at a 56th percentile and grew all the way to a 91st percentile by the end of the year. Parents may wish to look for consistency in scoring. As a parent might look at this percentile range column on the right side, a number toward the top might jump out the 37 percentile in fall. Educators never use one data point to make a decision. They make and use multiple. This 37 percentile, particularly considering where the child was at the end of first grade, may not seem to make sense. In fact, notice how the student jumped already in the winter administration, almost doubling their percentile. So if a parent sees a number that doesn't quite make sense, they may wish to contact the child's teacher. 
and say, does this make sense in what you know to be true about my child? Toward the left side of the report is a visual representation of the numbers. So these are RIT scores that we see along the top of these bars, and this allows a parent to see where my child scored in representation to others. So the first column is the student, the second is the district as a whole, which could be several schools, and the third column is the norm group. The norm for this assessment is over 5 million students throughout the United States. So as we quickly scan, we notice that there's only one time that this student actually scored below the norm group and below the rest of the district, and that is right here in the fall, which makes me believe that perhaps that score of 174 in the fall was not indicative of this child's potential. A parent might also notice that over on this side is the goal, and notice it has these dashes throughout the bar. So from the fall of 174, we would hope that this student would grow to 188 writ by the end of the year. And this bar is set individually for each student and is set in such a way that only 50% of the students will actually reach that number. So if 50% do, 50% don't. The final area that a parent might look at is right below the charts. And this gives a quick scan for a parent about which areas are particularly strong for a child and which areas might be uh, an area of growth for them. Words that may appear in this part of the report are high, high average, average, low average, and low. So we notice for this student that geometry, numbers and operations, and operations and algebraic thinking are all some of the things that this student does the best, and measurement and working with data is the part where they might need more work because they do not score as consistently as the other three performance areas. We hope this video is helpful for you in processing and understanding your child's progress report. Please keep in mind, we always want to use multiple points of data in making decisions, and if something doesn't make sense to you, the best thing to do is talk with your child about that and talk with your child's teacher.